Hello and welcome to this National Technology News webinar in association with InterSystems. Today we're going to be looking at the ways that organisations can utilise technology to navigate the real world challenges in achieving complete supply chain visibility. In an era characterised by rapid changes and unprecedented disruptions, the importance of a resilient supply chain cannot be overstated. And at the heart of this resilience lies the concept of complete visibility, a comprehensive understanding of every step, every mile and every data point within supply chains. A major reason why complete visibility is so crucial is that we find ourselves in the era of the permacrisis, a term coined to capture the perpetual state of uncertainty and volatility within which our businesses operate. To thrive in this environment, organisations need to adapt quickly, make informed decisions and mitigate risks. And that is precisely where complete visibility becomes the answer, as it allows you to anticipate disruptions, identify bottlenecks and make proactive decisions that will keep your supply chain resilient, responsive and ready for whatever challenges lie ahead. I'm your host, Jonathan Easton, editor of National Technology News, and joining me today are Mark Holmes, Senior Advisor for Supply Chain at Intersystems, Lucy Hyde, Founder and Managing Director of LNH Transport, and John Boubier, Director of the Supply Chain Centre of Excellence at Kingfisher. So, to start us off, Mark, I just want to get your perspective on what some of the practical challenges are in executing supply chain plan, plans in the real world and how organizations can overcome them. And thank you, Jonathan. You know, there's, there's several, and we start out with, as we know, there's so much disruption in the supply chain today, whether it's geopolitical events, changes in consumer demand and behavior on top of the the myriad of different systems that we have. So enterprise systems, typically many companies have 30, 50 different enterprise systems because of all the mergers and acquisitions. And then you have the, the myriad of applications. And if you combine that, the underlying issue is really around quality of data. How do I, there's so much silo data that's happened. So how do I bring that data together to create a connected tissue, if you will, so that it's all harmonized and normalized and then be able for you to do something with that data, create insights from data that is now brought together so that it can be more uh, insightful accurately. So with, with that insight then, um, uh, you know, we, we're here to talk about the, the insight that the complete visibility idea uh, brings. So um, Lucy, uh, to come over to you, uh, what are the key benefits that you see from employing visibility technology in the supply chain and how can it contribute to resiliency and exceptional customer experiences? Uh, well, basically for us, on the, we're, we're the transport side of this supply chain, so we're basically delivering the product to, to the end user as such, so whether whichever way or form that is. Um, so um, the visibility basically for us is, is the customer experience part of that. So um, we have to provide um, a positive and transparent customer experience. So the visibility for us is the tracking of the vehicles and obviously showing from, from start to finish of, um, of the job um, that, you know, where, 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 where they are, where, where the product is and, and when it's delivered. And obviously, like you say, the full tracking of that gives, gives the customer the full visibility, um, which obviously um, is a positive experience for them. And then it, that, that obviously helps the supply chain. So, um, you know, it reduces costs, the less disruption, improved customer service. Um, um, and basically that um, it would help us to improve um, decision making and response times and, and, and everything else um, on the transport side. And is this something that you've seen uh, the necessity for kind of evolve in, in the past few years, would you say, Lucy? Yeah, definitely. I think 
a lot of customers now do want to see the full tracking of their product and whether that's with, whether that's via um, a software package or just sort of old school as in a customer calling us to say can you give us um, an estimated time of arrival for this whereabouts is the cargo you know they just want they, they're wanting to see more visibility because obviously that's that helps them and helps their customer it's it's the whole part of the supply chain really um, but yeah we definitely have seen an increase in customers wanting to see a full visibility um, but in a way that does help us um, and that improves our customer service so that is beneficial for us in a way to provide that because that helps our customer. Well, I'm glad it's not just uh, me as a, as a needy consumer uh, when I get my deliveries uh, yeah. wanting to see where it is on the road and it's, it's also in business as well so I'm glad it's a kind of a, yeah. a universal uh, approach. Uh, yeah. So John uh, from the Kingfisher perspective I'm curious uh, to hear from you how complete visibility from the first mile to last mile uh, can help organizations like yourselves navigate and mitigate disruptions? Um, it, for us, it's absolutely critical. I mean, it's right at the heart of the Kingfisher supply chain strategy, which is why we're currently working very hard on end-to-end um, -end visibility uh, solution um, for the organization. And that's to face into the challenges that, that Mark already sort of talked about, you know, the geopolitical pressures we see and how they disrupt the supply chain through to the economic pressures affecting our consumers and, and the demand we see or the markets in which we operate through to supplier performance, freight and, and climate. All of these things are pressure points that, that impact us. So when we look at it from, from our side, um, I think there's four primary benefits that end-to-end -end visibility gives us. The first one of which is really a consistent single uh, view of the supply chain. So, you know, you've got a one-stop shop, one truth, that everybody can access from a, an analyst doing their, their orders or their planning through to the managers and even the board. So we get a consistent uh, view. Our metrics are linked, which means that we're no longer looking at just one particular KPI like on shop availability. We're looking at a suite of KPIs and how they interrelate and you can see the data together uh, and all that within a single interface. That's the first thing. The second one really is that it's real time decision making, really important. Um, Again, in today's world, so you know, being able to make those decisions quickly and effectively, um, and making sure that everybody can see the output of those decisions. The third one really is a faster issue resolution. Um, so I think with the tools that are available today, you can get into exception reporting. Um, as Mark already mentioned, I mean, there's massive and masses of data, uh, and as Lucy kind of alluded to, with kind of the end-to-end -end journey with with freight and the customer experience, you know, you need to bring all of that together. Uh, and often that's so huge, it's very difficult for one person to see the picture. And I think visibility tools can start to highlight that in a way that makes it really effective for you. And the final one really is a benefit is supply chain planning. So, you know, right at the heart of what we do, we want to make sure our demand planning processes, our supply execution processes are robust and that data and visibility helps inform it. So, you know, it's huge. It's, it's critical for how we move forward. That's so. They, they, that's what you're looking for. That's what you want uh, out of these uh, technologies and tools. Uh, but, but Mark, can you talk us through what some of those technologies and tools are that are available for organisations to achieve end-to-end -end visibility? And uh, if you, you agree with the the factors that John's just laid out, uh, whether they should be considered, if there are any additional factors uh, that should be considered when selecting the right solution. Uh, for, all, for an organization's specific supply chain needs. Yeah, sure. I, I think, John, you're, you're, you're spot on. You're exactly right. We see so much of that, all your factors uh, uh, very well laid out. And I, I think, you know, what comes to mind in helping to, to answer that question too is that there are applications out there. You could say there are applications that can say, let's provide intent visibility but I think because of the comments that, that Lucy also made and the disruption and you know, expanding on what John said is that when you look at the, the myriad of data against the applications and your ecosystem of suppliers, your logistics companies, it's difficult to say one application is gonna give you what I would call a unified view, an accurate real-time unified view to make those decisions that will 
provide a, a more real-time, uh, let's say even ROI-based response. So, you know, buy versus build comes into mind too. You know, you could maybe buy five, you know, Merck provides, you know, a, a, you know, all the container companies provide visibility, but do you want to have five or six different visibility solutions and control towers versus can you get technology that brings all of that together and decision intelligence data platform, if you will, to be able to give you that end-to-end -end visibility with the disparate data being brought together with that unified view to be able to then move to more prescriptive insights to make those more real-time decisions. So when we're talking about uh, insights, the big you know buzzword at the moment is uh, AI, and we're looking at machine <laughs> learning as well. Uh, you know, they're a bit you know a bit buzzwordy at the moment, yeah, but yeah. they do genuinely have a role to play in business. So, uh, what role does or can AI and machine learning play in demand sensing specifically and forecasting? Yeah, I, it's uh, if I could continue on, if that's okay, Jonathan, on that. <laughs> so, Please and I ahead. think just going back to the previous two is that look, you know, I think. The, 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 le the least amount of products provide your end in visibility to be able to then provide those those insights that we've all been talking about, I think is also key, right? Because you want to have an efficient, uh, cost efficient uh, and an accelerated time to value. Uh, because as we know, some projects can can take up to a year to, if not longer, to implement year and a half of value. Well, we've already gone through cycles of seasonality, and then we lose uh, the ability to, to meet demand and, and meet customer expectations. So with that segue, the, the whole issue around, I call it composite AI. You're right. There's a lot of help. What does AI really mean? Right. There's there's many clients that we work with that, you know, a lot, oftentimes you, you know, you don't even use ML because you can use algorithms and you can use modeling so you can create an optimization engine to provide value quickly to demand to sense demand changes. So behavior changes, let's say at the store level, maybe it's uh, it's whether that's impacting demand changes against a particular product line. Uh, it could be just, you know, sensing demand changes depending upon the vertical that you're in on inbound first mile, let alone last mile. And, and the whole what I call composite AI of, of ML and algorithms and modeling has a significant impact because why? It's hard for, you know, you could have 20 humans in a room and still not be able to see some of the insights that that uh, a technology can see because you're running all of this modeling and optimization real time with, with millions of sets of data so that you can provide that real time output that's gonna be accurate and insightful and be able to make those decisions to meet like what Lucy had said earlier, that customer expectation. And what John said is that you wanna have this unified view but you need to be accurate. And that's where uh, the, the whole aspect of ML and, and as I said, composite AI come into play. Lucy, John, can I get you to peel back the curtain at all on uh, on how you guys uh, are approaching AI within your supply chain visibility? Yeah, I mean, I can certainly say that you know it's it's a subject area uh, that we are you know really focused on. Um, we've got you know it's a large organization we've got um, experts internally who are helping us really understand the full potential of the opportunity uh, for supply chain in kingfisher uh, but certainly when we get into the demand planning space and we're starting to think about um, our kind of predictive analytics that can sit in that space and and looking at where uh, we can evolve those trends that's where the huge opportunity i think lies um, but as well as mark said the reality is we've got huge amounts of data i think every organization has today uh, and actually sifting through that and working out what's really important and surfacing what's important and what's changing that you wouldn't necessarily notice as the human being analyzing it in a kind of old school Excel world. Uh, you know, that's where the power lies. And I think that's what we are going to see coming through in Kingfisher in the coming years. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The same, obviously. Yeah, exactly the same. It, it, it's just really making sure that the, the data is being analyzed correctly um, and efficiently. Um, to eliminate any sort of errors, really, um, and um, so that you can provide like a continuous improvement of that. 
Um, and again, whether that is just, you know, re it being regularly internally um, updated, whether that is via software or whether that is basically just by, a, you know, an employee staff having that and inputting that information. It's all about having up to date information, whichever way that comes from, I think. Mm, uh, that's uh, very interesting to hear all of your perspectives uh, on this, on, on, on how AI and what role of role it can play uh, in forecasting um, so right now we are sat here recording this uh, and we were before uh, before we started today we were talking about how well certainly here in the UK uh, Mark's joining us from uh, from uh, the US uh, we were talking about how we're we're finally starting to experience something that looks like summer um, but uh, obviously, in a few months, we have the the winter period, which is which is always a busy, busy time across the supply chain. Uh, so, Mark, I'll ask you, uh, how does end to end visibility enable proactive decision making uh, and the ability to anticipate and mitigate disruptions across the supply chain? You know, especially ahead of that peak winter period. Yeah, I think if you know if we take and put together everything that we've all stated so far, right? I think we we all agree that that we need to mitigate disruption the best that we can. We can't eliminate it, but we can we can mitigate disruption. You know, it's all a part. You know, we oftentimes we as supply chain professionals here talk about creating a an agile and resilient supply chain, right? Through digital transformation, which we're talking about. And that's where the Indian visibility comes into play, because as we enter that winter period, really for, for both the UK and for the US, you know, the snow can be quite heavy and there can be disruptions. Uh, there can be issues with, uh, because of the significant, typically seasonal demand that's going to be coming in. There could be a lot of congestion at ports. Maybe suppliers can't meet the purchase orders that have been placed eight months ago. We don't want to know that we can't meet a purchase order, you know, a month before it's due. Let's let's start to know months out that it's going to be an issue. And maybe there's disruption with those containers coming in, or maybe disruption along the transportation on uh, within the roadways. And then the demand, there may be a significant demand pattern and shift that maybe something is is, you know, like colors, demand changes in colors, but we've already placed all our orders. So there's all of this creates how do we effectively manage disruption that we know is going to be enhanced during this season that's coming up. And that's why we are working on into invisibility, but integrated, connected into invisibility that creates a unified view to be able to sense this in not only real time, but proactively predict it. So then we can make the right decisions to be able to optimize fulfillment on whether it's to the end customer or into manufacturing to make product. John, you, uh, you know, Kingfisher operates, you know, all these household brands, certainly in the UK, B&Q, Screwfix come to mind. Um, is this kind of an opinion you share uh, in terms of that end-to-end -end visibility? Yeah, absolutely, um, totally agree. Because I think when you look, um, you know, a large proportion of our range come from uh, Far East and Asia, and when you get into end-to-end -end visibility and you start going further up the supply chain uh, beyond the port to the manufacturer and you start putting data points in for production milestones, uh, as you start to achieve that kind of level of visibility, you've got an early warning system of potential issues. And if you've got two suppliers, um, both impacted by a particular raw material commodity issue, you might be able to prioritise then with end-to-end -end visibility where you're likely then to end up with a consumer issue uh, at the, the sharp end of uh, the retailer. And I think that's where the real power lies. So then you can make the best decision on how you support those individual vendors, prioritize shipments, prioritize containers, freight movements, et cetera. And that's where the power really comes because you're seeing the whole supply chain end to end, consumer right through to supplier. I know we were talking about uh, the, the busy winter period, but I, I can't imagine that a lot of your uh, customers uh, being, you know, DIY people are going to want to be doing uh, <laughs> doing up refurbs in the middle of winter, but I'm sure that you guys have busy times as well. <laughs> we, we do. We have a very, um, we actually have a lot of interior projects in the build up to Christmas. People getting their homes ready for families coming to visit. But yeah. our peak is around Easter, as you would imagine. There's a big gardening business in certainly in the UK, uh, but actually across the group. 
and uh, we see that around Easter time. So that's where we really hit our peak. Of course, of course. Um, there's just something I wanted to come back to what you mentioned earlier, Lucy, in terms of the uh, health of data um, mm -hmm. and how important it is to ensure uh, that organisations maintain healthy data. But how how can that data uh, enhance end-to-end -end visibility and generate? generate valuable insights and, 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 you know, how can it be used to facilitate better decision making? Well, all, all organisations, I think, obviously, you know, like I say, I'm talking from the transport side of it, but we need to ensure that we're using software that collects real time data um, initially. But also, again, we obviously we touched on this earlier, didn't we? We've got to, to make sure that the data is regularly updated. Um, so that's you know throughout the whole um, the whole journey, um, because without that, then the, the data is not going to be analysed correctly, um, and we wouldn't have um, this end-to-end -end visibility without the clear uh, and precise data. Um, so you know that is the main thing really that I would say, um, because then without that, you, you can't make any um, improvements. You can't make the continuous improvements that you need to to, to provide the, the service, uh, which it always comes down to for us. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we need to make sure that our goods are collected for our customers on time and timely and delivered um, timely and uh, professionally. But um, at the end of the day, we still have to we still have to have this um, clear visibility. So we need to have our data needs to be, no matter, like I said earlier, no matter whether that is via software or basically via just our transport team regularly updating and speaking to the drivers to update our customers um, so that they can have this positive customer experience and then they can then update without this continuous conversation and communication. Uh, they can't then pass that information on to wherever that needs to go to in their part of the chain. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it is about software, um, you know, and a lot is talked about, you know, obviously having up-to-date software um, and management systems and clear data, but, is it, it, but it, it, it is about staff as well. It is about having your staff trained correctly um, and investing in training and skills development so they know what they need to do and what their part of the process is as well. Um, uh, and with that, um, that facilitates better decision making. Um, you know, and it, it, it is down to, especially within the transport office, as we work here um, as a team, uh, we work together as a team um, so that we can provide this continuous, um, you know, service um, for our customers, which is what they expect and rightly so. Mm, absolutely. Uh, one thing that I uh, kind of thought of whilst you were speaking there is uh, I was speaking to somebody recently who works in the, the product side at a, a major supermarket, not going to name any names, uh, yeah. but they were often, you know, they're dealing with their um, with, with their suppliers and it seems crazy to me. This is a household name and everything they do is just plugged into one giant Excel spreadsheet. And I was thinking that can't be a particularly healthy uh, way of working forwards. Uh, it doesn't seem very modern. Um, but as you say, you know, it, it's all about having a kind of we talk about end to end visibility, but it's kind of a, a top down approach to things within an organization. Um, Mark, I can see you nodding along there with some of the things that Lucy was yeah. saying. Is there anything you'd like to comment on? Yeah, I, I love that, uh, 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 Lucy, uh, healthy, healthy data. Uh, yeah. uh, oftentimes I use that because if you define, I mean, obviously healthy data can mean different things to different people, but ultimately healthy data is not only being accurate, right? Because, you know, you know one thing that we come in, in uh, into discussion oftentimes is with so many disparate siloed systems you one skew one skew could seem like it's 10 20 different products and so you've got you know these 10 to 20 different products when it's really the same product and the mess that that to the line of business and that that causes so healthy data is is accuracy through harmonization and normalization of data but it's also we need it real time we don't need we don't want to have data latency because what good is data three three days from now when we need to make decisions like what John was saying earlier? We need it now. We need it real time. We need it to be accurate. 
and we need it to be usable to create uh, really decisions that can be made in real time with, and I, I've used it before, but you know, you know, prescriptive insights, consider the ROI behind it too, so that that data that's healthy provides better decisions. Hmm. Yeah. So we've been talking about the uh, the health of of data there, uh, but John, I'll turn to you now and ask what organisations can uh, what actions can the organisations take based on the insights provided uh, by that data and by the visibility technology to optimise sourcing requirement, uh, inventory balancing, product allocation, all that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. So I think um, you know when I think about that from an inventory perspective. I mean, having that end-to-end -end visibility means that, you know, very quickly you can start to remix your order book, your profiles, your stock flows, um, reprioritizing your inbound, all of which, you know, is enabling us to make sure we're, we're efficient from a financial perspective, but also from a kind of sustainability climate perspective, so we're not being inefficient with what we're shipping. So, you know, all sorts of benefits start to spin out uh, when you start thinking just about inventory and, and where it grows into. Uh, but plus end-to-end -end visibility starts to enable us to do things that historically would have been really complex and difficult. Certainly in Kingfisher, one of the things we're doing now is being able to transfer stock with the, with the relative ease between different stocking locations so we can optimise our stock more effectively because we've got visibility of that stock everywhere. And that really helps. And to, you know, picking up on the point that Lucy was just making about uh, the customer and, and thinking about the, the real-time element, I mean, that's really critical because everything we do at the end of the day is to make sure that customer is fully satisfied in terms yeah. of their experience of working with, you know, the logistics provider, you know, with us as the, the retailer and, and, and what their kind of uh, experience has been. So visibility of any little pain points along the way and being able then to jump on that and, and correct course quickly is critical. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. that was inventory. So, sorry, I was just going to say the other couple I've got here, just on sourcing, um, I think... You know, when you look at it from a sourcing perspective, uh, enables us to start thinking about, you know, uh, what our lead times are and our order multiples and starting seeing where we've got pinch points where we can get optimise our end-to-end -end supply chain. It enables us to look at routes to market, you know, so every really every part of how we operate a supply chain comes under the lens when you've got end-to-end -end visibility and you can really start to tune up your business to make it more efficient. And ultimately, and it comes down to the product allocation. So I think when you look at it from that perspective, deploying the product into the right location, the right volume at the right time, you know, kind of old school basics, but it's made so much more easy and straightforward with visibility. And I guess the part of that is that the point about the Excel that was mentioned a moment ago, mm -hmm. um, you know, many organizations have got that Excel industry, right? And you spend half your day trying to put data together to work out what the problem is, to then work out what you're going to do about it. If in a click of a button you've got where the issue is and you've even been prompted to a potential solution, all your energy is now going on improvement rather than trying to work out the problem. And that is where you get the big win, I think. Yeah. So, oh, sorry, go ahead, Lucy. Yeah, the, the end bit there, definitely, it is. Um, um, you know, and everybody's, like you're saying, everyone's talking about the software, but you have to have the right software in place you know, whether what whatever that is, whether it's, you know, cloud-based platforms or whatever software or um, technology that you need to have in your business to work with visibility. Um, but yeah, um, I, I totally agree, agreed with what, um, what, what John was saying there. Um, it's so, so with that all in mind, then uh, I'll, I'll ask you, Lucy, what are some of the strategies and technologies that organisations can adopt uh, to achieve that kind of agility and resilience uh, to, that allows them to cope with uh, any kind of supply chain disruptions? Well, again, the same, you know, we, we're talking about the same thing, really. It's, you know, it's having the, um, it's having your software in place. It's having, you know, whatever that is um, in place in your business, the automation side of it. But then it's also about um, having this visibility um, and having uh, main, maintaining and having good relationships with customers and communication um, and forming strong um, collaborations with the supply chain and your, your fellow members of the chain. 
Um, because no matter what you have got in place for um, supply chain disruptions or um, managing peaks and troughs within uh, throughout the year, and you can do whatever you want to do, scenario planning and, you know, um, um, and do a whole overhaul of, of your infrastructure. But at the end of the day, you need to be able to act Still, you can have your software in place, but you still need to be able to manage your disruptions. And some of those aren't manageable, as in, you know, you only have to talk about COVID, don't you? And things that, that drop on you, which you can actually filter in or plan in to your system, that you have to be able to be flexible. Um, you have to have, you know, flexible logistics networks and transport networks. Um, and people suppliers that you can speak to to enable you to still provide the same service that you're offering your customer. Um, and you know, within us, within our with our business, we're we're a, a same day um express uh, transport company. So, you know, whether that's just one box in a van up to a full, you know, Arctic trailer load, but our customers expect a quick, fast service. And a lot of our work is can you collect this within the hour? Um, you know, we need this picking up this morning, we need it delivered directly. So ours is all dedicated delivery. So our customers cargo or product and it's delivered direct to wherever they want it to go to. Um, so we have to we have to have um, we have to have the software in place, obviously, uh, but we have to have these strong relationships and strong networks to be able to to facilitate that, to be able to provide the service that we are offering. Just before we wrap up, Mark, I want to turn to you and ask uh, just a follow on from that question in terms of uh, the technologies specifically uh, that you view as being uh, a way of not necessarily completely solving the issues of uh, supply chain disruption, but uh, kind of trying to mitigate them. Yeah, I, I think, you know, it's all of the conversation we had, you know, comes to mind to me, too, is that, you know, a true true end to end visibility is not easy to achieve, and so often as we hear about, I was just talking to a client the other day, four control towers, four control towers in the company all trying to achieve on shelf availability. How do you do that, right? I mean, you you have four different sets of data, and, and the data is different, and you you, well, you you need this unified version. You need this one ultimate control tower, but I think. It's that it comes down to technology, not necessarily an application to make it happen, but technology. To me, what we're seeing is, again, and it's something that Gartner just uh, sent out, uh, is, is the whole aspect of, of decision, intelligence, and analytics data platforms. I truly think that we, we have the application, we have enough applications in enterprise systems. What can we do with the data? What can we create as a decision intelligence platform to be able to help us be able to see that information and be able to bring it in. And ultimately, from a technology standpoint, to me, you need in one in one product, you need the ability. So the embedded technology ability to harmonize and normalize data from all your disparate sources. You need the ability to ingest data real time at rest from source. Don't move it again into yet another data lake, data warehouse. You need technology to keep it where it is, but use it when you need it. And then those two combined plus you need embedded interoperability. So you need to be able to create technology that can, that's also embedded in one product, the ability to simulate your business process flows, but then also your embedded AI and ML capabilities so that you're not going yet off to another source to find that capability. It is also that for technology also embedded in one product. And why is that important? Is so that you can have an extraordinarily efficient, cost-effective way to do everything we've been talking about. I think that's a that's a perfect way of rounding out a discussion. We've heard a lot of uh, very interesting insights in terms of uh, data visibility uh, from mile to mile, for, uh, from the first mile to last mile, end-to-end uh, -end visibility, and ultimately a uh, kind of uh, an understanding that it's not necessarily about just having a one solution that you can track at something and make it work. It's about intelligently using the data that's at your disposal to um, uh, to, to maximize efficiency and ultimately deliver customer excellence. Uh, so unfortunately, that's all we have time for today, uh, but I'm sure we could carry on chatting for 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 much longer than this. Uh, for National Technology News, I am Jonathan Easton, editor of National Technology News, and special 
Thanks to my guest for today, Mark Holmes, Senior Advisor for Supply Chain at InterSystems, Lucy Hyde, Founder and Managing Director of LNH Transport, and John Bubeer, Director of the Supply Chain Centre of Excellence at Kingfisher. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.